morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bless the Lord, amen. What a wonderful day that we have before us, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Jesus is Lord. Greetings from... Amen. Hello, Mickey. Say hello. Say hello. What are you doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus is Lord. He is God all by himself. Amen. Blessed be the God is good. We worship him and we bless his name. In Jesus' mighty name, it is well. You will arrive safely to your destination in Jesus' name. There shall be no hindrance in Jesus' mighty name. We receive you on this continent. Amen. In the matchless name of Jesus. Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. We exalt his name. Come on now, get ready. Jesus is in the house. We exalt his name and we lift him up. Ah, we appreciate him this hour. We appreciate him this second for his goodness towards us. Amen. In this season, in this month of December, we acknowledge his aw awesomeness, his wholeness. Come on, begin to thank him in Jesus' name, in your own special way. Ah, in a language that is only familiar to you and him. Come on, open up your mouth and thank him. We give him the glory and we give him the praise. We give him the glory and we give him the praise. We give him the glory and we give him the praise in the name of Jesus. We honor him. We worship him. He is God all by himself. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. God, we thank you for life. We thank you for the conditioning that, Father God, you're putting us through. Father, we appreciate you and we say glory be to your name. Hallelujah. In the matchless name of Jesus, Father, there is nobody like you. There is nobody like you. There is nobody like you. In the mighty name of Jesus, nobody is comparable to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We love you, God. We appreciate you, God. Your kingdom is everlasting. Your power is supreme. In Jesus' mighty name, we come to lift up your name. We come to exalt your name. We come to say glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for allowing us to be in the land of the living in the name of Jesus, that whatever has been plotted against us has not worked. In the name of Jesus, Father God, by reason of the superior blood of Jesus, here we are. Ah, in the month of December, by reason, and the reason is the blood of Jesus, by reason, and the reason is the blood of Jesus. We are so grateful and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, Mickey, come join us. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy One of Israel, we thank you. We glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, let your blood continuously protect us. Let your blood guide us. Let your blood lead us. In the name of Jesus, by reason of the blood, Father God, we are grateful for preserving our young ones, Father. We cover them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. That, Father God, they will never, Father God, have any contact and any, Father God, contract with evil. In the name of Jesus, by reason of the blood, we preserve them. By reason of the blood, we cover them. In the name of Jesus, and let the blood of Jesus be their protection. Let the blood of Jesus eliminate them, Father God, from every handwriting of evil. Let the handwriting of Jehovah be their portion in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Father God, we bless your name and we say hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for your marvelous deeds and for, for your marvelous works. In Jesus' precious name, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, come, Lord God. We appreciate you this morning. Ah, come, Father God, in your own special way, in Jesus' mighty name. Come, because, Father God, there is nobody else that we will give this invitation to. We want you and only you alone. And, Father, teach us, Father God, to be in your presence, to be part, Father God, of worship, as we lift up the name of the Lord this morning, in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Our God is great. Our God is excellent. Our God is magnificent. Amen. In Jesus' name, forever he will be upon the throne. Yes, Lord. I said, forever he will be upon the throne. He is forever highly exalted. My God, nobody like him. That is the God that we serve. Amen. Let's continue to lift him up. Let's continue to thank him. Let's continue to lift up the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Come on, let's do this. In Jesus' mighty name, the righteous run into that name and they are saved. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah. Father, we lift up, we lift up, we lift up the name. Ah, we lift up the name of the Lord this morning. We lift up the name of the Lord this morning. We lift up his most precious name. In the mighty name of Jesus, nobody like our God, nobody like our Savior. Come on, in the name of Jesus, come on, fill the atmosphere with prayer. Fill the atmosphere with prayer. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Ah, for your name is precious, and your name is magnificent, and your name is unique. And we thank you because it is your name and nobody else's name. You have all power in your hands. In Jesus' precious name, be anointed, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We lift up our doctors before you right now, God. We lift up, Father God, those in the medical field and, Father God, all the other fields, Father. We lift them before you, the firefighters, Father God, those who risk their lives, God, my God. You know, uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You know, any time, let me, let, me let me just move away from the car for one second, for one second. I don't know why this has just come to me, but I just want to say this. You know, any time there is a potential for evil to you know, come alive. Blood needs to be spilled. You know, Sister Brenda, I, you know, I, I remember, you know, when I, whilst I was in America, you know, when I was traveling with the prophet, Prophet Khan, and sometimes we all, you know, we just sit down, his father, you know, the whole family have a conversation. And his father would always say, there was one specific day that he really began to have respect for the law enforcement people. And the reason why he had respect for them was he said, I think when he was young, he was like in a nightclub, you know how you know how it is, and uh, there was I think there was a gunfight. Okay, so you know everybody was running away from the gunfight. Do you something? So everybody's running away. There's pandemonium. Everybody's leaving, and then when he turned around, he saw the law enforcement officers running towards where the gunfight was coming from. Does that make sense? So when everybody was running away from danger. He wasn't running. They were not running away from danger. They were running towards danger. So I don't know how this sounds. I don't know what this means. In Jesus' name. But I would like us to this morning, in the magnificent name of Jesus, those who put themselves in danger. Those who put themselves in the position of danger. When the enemy is hungry for blood. We, we do intercession spiritually to prevent these kind of things from happening. But there are physical agents, you know, people who work for security forces, those who are doctors. Sometimes when the enemy wants to snatch somebody's life, there is a doctor, you know, who's trying to tie up, you know, who's trying to make sure that there's pressure to make sure that the blood doesn't flow so that the person doesn't die. Am I, am, am I making sense now? So, you know, all over the nations of this world, they, these people become a target. We are targets spiritually because we, we, we frustrate the devil. But there are those who naturally will prevent, you know, anytime there's a mass shooting or there's a killing or whatever, there's always people, you know, who prevent the casualty list from going higher. All these folk become a target for the wicked one. And so this morning, we're also praying for the covering of the Lord over their lives and over their homes and over their children, over their loved ones, everything that concerns them. We are releasing the Holy One of Israel by the blood of Jesus to cover them. 
Can we do that this morning? It doesn't matter what religion, it doesn't matter what their belief system is. We're asking God to cover them in Jesus' name. We're asking God to cover them in Jesus' name. We're asking God to cover them in the name of Jesus. We're asking God to protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. We are asking God to protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking God to show forth his mercy in the name of Jesus. Let them arise and be protected. Let them arise and be safe in the name of Jesus. That the hand of the Lord will not fail them. Our prayers will back them. Our prayers will sustain them. Our prayers will prevent the enemy from having the advantage in the matchless name of Jesus. We release that into their lives this hour. We release that into their homes this hour. We protect them by the finger and by the fire of God in Jesus' mighty name. By the finger and by the fire of God, they are protected and they are covered in Jesus' mighty name. They will not be destroyed by any evil work in Jesus' mighty name. They will not be exterminated by any evil plans in Jesus' mighty name. They will not be frustrated ah, in the mighty name of Jesus. They will arise and conquer. The name of the Lord is being lifted up over their homes and over their lives this hour. The name of the Lord is strengthening them in Jesus' name. Micaiah, the name of the Lord is working. The name of the Lord is working. The power in the name of the Lord is working. It is working right now. It is working right now. It is working right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is working. 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 In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is working. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Are you okay? It's working. In Jesus' name. You want to go? I'll see you later, okay? In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is working. The name of the Lord, it is working in Jesus' mind. We cover them in Jesus' mighty name. We ask the Lord to protect them. We ask the Lord to keep them. We ask the Lord to be their shepherd in Jesus' name. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Yes, Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. The, listen, this is this is a life. You know, there's some of us, when you were children, you were around prayer. You didn't, you know, you might not even know. You might not, obviously, you, you know, you won't remember. But you were born around prayer. You know what I'm saying? We were born into prayer. So, you know, God exposed them to prayer from the very beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up this name. We lift up this name. This month of December, Father God, we will not be hearing bad news. This month of December, we will not be hearing negative news. This month of December, we will not be hearing news that always brings disaster. News that brings sadness. We will not be hearing it in the mighty name of Jesus. We take a comprehensive insurance. We take an insurance policy. My God, in the name of Jesus. I said we take an insurance policy in the name of Jesus. We take an insurance policy in the name of Jesus. We cover ourselves. We cover our children. We cover those, Father God, in positions that, Father God, prevent the enemy from having the opportunity to drink more blood. And, Father, we expose those who aid the enemy's agenda. We expose those who aid the enemy's agenda. In the mighty name of Jesus, anybody who abuses their position, anybody who is secretly aiding the agenda of wickedness, whatever position they occupy, from the highest position, my God, all the way down, anybody who's aiding the devil, the devil's agenda, the demonic agenda, the satanic agenda, anybody who is aiding the devil, we expose their agenda in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. You know, I read a scripture that blessed me this morning, Sister Amanda. Listen to this now. And uh, remember when Joseph told the two world, one died, and he said, when you get back to your position, remember me. Talk to the king about me. Tell the Pharaoh about me. And the person forgot until the king had a dream 
And when the king had a dream or the Pharaoh had a dream and he was disturbed, he did not go to the people that he would normally go to, Sister Diana. And then guess what? The Bible, when I read it in the King James, it says that when he remembered his mistake, he said, oh, king, I've made a mistake. There is a Hebrew boy in the prison house. Everything that I'm doing now, when I dreamt it, he interpreted it to me. What well, just now? So you know what? He can do the same for you, Mr. Pharaoh. The Pharaoh asked for Joseph to be brought to him. What well, just now? When they got to the dungeon, the pit, the hell hole that Joseph was in, they hastily brought him out of the dungeon. I love that word, hastily. That means that they were in a rush. Because when the Pharaoh summons you, you don't, you don't miss a second. But guess what? The Bible says that Pharaoh, or rather Joseph, paused for a second. Even in their haste, he said, hey, 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 hold on, hold on, Sister Trina, hold on, give me one second. Because watch this now, I remember that my first coat, Calabasia, the first coat that my father gave me, my brothers dipped it in blood. My second coat, Potiphar's wife took it. This is my third coat that was given to me in this prison house. And I'm not going to allow you guys to take it away from me. Because guess what? Anytime something is taken away from me, it brings me into a position where just now of distress, accusations, allegations, and into a place of negativity. Just Amanda. So this time, I'm not going to allow anybody to take this off me. Guess what? I am going to hand it back. You know, you know, honestly, God is my witness. I'm excited this morning. You know why? Because I was asking the Lord when I read it. I didn't understand. I'm like, God, what is the revelation? The first one, my brothers took it forcefully. The second one, Potiphar's wife, took it forcefully. The first one represented death. The second one was an allegation. That is what was the evidence that was used against me to find myself in this pit. This time, I am determined that nobody will use anything that comes off my body, which is now, against me in a negative way. Ooh, I'm excited this morning. This time, what is now, I'm not going to allow anybody to take anything off me, Sister Mary, forcefully and use it against me. This is what happens when you pray, a servant heart. Sometimes you will not understand. Prophetess Caroline, you know, you, 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 you will not understand. You just read the text. It don't make no sense, Sister Mary, but you know, you just push in prayer. When you pause for a second and it begins to talk to you. See, this time, I am going to give up that thing on my own. And when I give it up, what is now, it gives me, see, when somebody takes something away from you, they have the power. Am I making sense? When they take it from you, see, they have power because they took it. And that means that if you want that thing back, you've got to go and beg for it. Because they took it from you. It gives them power. But Sister Mary, Sister Amanda... When I hand something over, it is proof that I have power. Because guess what? Guess what? Oh, woman of God, lady, did you beat me to it? My God, you, you, you're, you're faster than me. You're, 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 you know, it's in both this morning. Because Jesus will go on to say, see, this life of mine, because I have all power, I can, I can, I can lay down and pick it back up whenever I'm ready. My God. Joseph had a revelation. Oh, Kalabasia, Vikuraba, Dr. Dana. You know, sometimes the lady, did, you know, oh, I feel, listen, listen, some of you, there's some things that the Lord is telling you this morning, lay it down. That's what he's telling you. Through this prayer, through this medium. He said, listen to me, don't wait for somebody to come and snatch it away from you. Because guess what? Then you become a prisoner to that person and that thing, Dr. Dana. 
But there is somebody this morning that I believe the Lord is saying to you, listen to me, lay it down. It doesn't have no power over you. It hasn't got no authority over you when you lay it down. You are telling that thing that, listen, you ain't no bad boy. When Potiphar's wife had that coat in her hands, she had power over Joseph. When the brothers had the tunic in their hands, they had power over Joseph. You know why they had power? Because they could scheme and manipulate and make a case, a lie. Same for the wife, Potiphar's wife. Oh, but guess what? When I decide to lay it down myself and walk away, when I decide to lay it down and walk away, it is evident that I have had an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it is a sign also that, guess what? I am not just walking away, but what is now? I am leaving one dimension to the next and guess what i'm not returning oh i'm not returning i am not returning i am not returning i am not looking back i will not come back to this cycle again listen to me when you have the opportunity to lay something down and you do it spiritually what you're saying is that cycle over my life is broken Is broken. Oh, I feel God. I feel like shouting. I feel like praising Him. Because, you know, whenever you get the opportunity, what is now, I keep saying this to you, you feel, you have to feel, you have to feel special when the Lord talks to you. Because you know what? I don't know about you, but you feel like you're the only one that He's talking to. So you know, like Jesus really loves me. I read this text this morning. Micaiah was playing around. I just had the Bible. I read it. Couldn't really grasp what it was saying. That's why when I came on, you see, I just went into prayer. You see, I was just praying. Didn't know what direction the Lord was going to take us. But because I read the text and I spoke to him, he now spoke back to us. I said, this is what I'm trying to tell you this morning. Got to lay it down, brothers and sisters. Lay it down. Don't wait for somebody to come and take that job away from you. Lay it down. Don't wait for there to be a conspiracy so that the people will come and torment you. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down because guess what? The God that we serve, he knows everything. Lay it down. Lay it down because what he has for you is much bigger than what you could ever imagine. Lay it down. Walk away from it. Step away. Step aside. Prophet Martin, God bless you, sir. Don't know if I've ever seen you on Paramount, but thank you for the support. Lay it down. Lay it down. I read, you know, I had to go just... Can I just have two minutes? I mean, the time is already gone. We might as well just take another two minutes. And I read it in the... Uh, uh, in the... King James. What just now? Genesis 41 verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. The Pharaoh sent. So, you know, like, you know, for instance, some of you in the, in the companies that you work in, let's say the CEO calls for you, whatever you're doing, you stop it, you put it down, because the boss is calling you. And watch this now. And they brought him hastily. That word hastily in the King James, what just now, means to run, to rush. They rushed him out of the dungeon. And I can imagine when they rushed him, I said, hey, bro, ho, ho, hold on. What are you doing? He said, listen, the Pharaoh's looking for you. He said, I, I hear you, but, but, but hold on. You don't understand how long I have been in this predicament for. 
And listen to me. I am going to my final destination. See, the last time I remember, on my way to my destination, where just now, my brothers took something off me. The next time I found myself climbing up, this woman made an accusation against me. That is how I found myself in this place. Now, guess what? I'm going to go into the Pharaoh's quarters. Ooh, can I shout? Can I shout? Prophet Manning, can you shout? Shout for me if you can. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in Ghana. The shouting thing, I, I could never learn it. That's one thing that I never learned when I was in America. How to shout. How to shout like a, you know, like a, you know, like a, like a, like a Pentecostal, you know, in American church. Listen to this now. Dr. Nikisha. Listen, sir. See, Prophet Manning, he was going to the Pharaoh's quarters where there were people there, which is now scheming and manipulating Dr. Nikisha to get positions. Dr. Dana. And so he had enough sense to know what is now. If I don't lay this coat down, this clothes down, when I get into the palace. Oh, Talaba. You know, some of you, you know what your biggest mistake was? You know, you went into that business. You went into that company, that is the diner. And you didn't even know what is now that the people that you are managing or the people that you are working with applied for the position that you currently occupy. And they didn't get it. And they brought you from the outside into that position. And so now, whatever means necessary, they want to sabotage you, Sister Cheryl. You, you don't know. Listen, I went through that when I was in London. I got me a position and I was excited and I was shouting. When I got into the job, it was the worst experience I've ever had. You, you've heard me talk about it. So that young boy, Joseph, said, uh-uh, my brothers were envious of me because my father loved me and I had dreamt of what I was going to become. And I told them, Potiphar's wife also developed a liking for me. And because I did not agree with what her spirit was saying to her, what is now, she also plotted against me. Now, what is now, I'm getting ready to go into the presence of the Pharaoh, what is now, and interpret a dream for the Pharaoh. Now, what is now, he has wise men, Sister Cheryl. He has dream interpreters in the palace. And you think they're going to sit back and watch me come in and take their shine and take their glory? So guess what? Ah, I feel God. Guess what? Sister Cheryl, guess what? I'm going to make sure. What is that thing that they say? Is it once bitten, twice shy, something like that? It just came to my mind. Is it, is it, is it something like that? So now I've had enough sense because of what I've been through. That saying, is it, is it right? Once bitten, twice shy, something like that? Am I making sense? Somebody help me out. So you say, uh-uh, I'm, I'm not going to allow them, woman of God, once bitten, twice shy, that's it, Sister Brenda, thank you. So guess what? I'm going to lay this thing down myself so that when I get into the Pharaoh's palace, into the Pharaoh's quarters, what happened to me and Potiphar's wife would not happen again. What happened between me and my own brothers would not happen again. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. As the Lord, I told you the blood speaks. The blood has a voice. It gives you revelation. Listen to me. Whatever it is that the Lord will put into your spirit this morning to lay down, trust me, lay it down. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Lay it down and keep on walking. Lay it down, keep on walking. Because listen to me, there is so much greatness on the inside of you. There is so much greatness before you. But sometimes we carry baggages 
and these baggages as we move along the lines will be used against us in a negative way lay it down lay it down drop it just lay it down and move on even if you think it's costly and it might cost you some of you but lay it down listen to me why are you fighting to take what you have in a dungeon into the palace I mean, ask yourself that question. Why are you stressing? Want to carry something that you don't need from economy to business class? You know, whenever you sit in business class, first class, you know, you get the best of service. You get the best of everything. Imagine yourself. When you get moved from economy to first class and you want to carry that menu or that food that they gave you in economy, you want to carry that food to business class. When there is a table laid out before you in business class where the menu is different to that which you're given in economy. When I, when I came from a call to prayer, you know, this year, God connected us to one of our, you know, sisters who happens to work or has worked for Delta Airlines. So, you know, she got me a good deal. So, Prophet Manning, for the first time in my life, I sat in business class. I said, God, all this time I've been disrespected in my life because as soon as I sat on the plane, the lady came up to me and said, Sir, what would you have? Wine, whatever, whatever. I said, well, just give me some orange juice or something. Listen to me. This was before the plane even takes off. Sister Sabria. Then she brings me the menu. She said, uh, you know, what would you have? I picked one or two things. Now listen to me. As soon as you order within two, one, two minutes, it is brought to you. They come to you and they ask you what you want. And they call you by your name. I said, all my life I've been disrespected because I sat in economy. Nobody knew my name. They just gave me whatever they wanted to give me. Listen to me this morning. Give it up. Lay it down, Sister Marilyn. There is better in store. I rose up this morning to let you know that the God that we serve is still in the business of speaking to you and I. We love him. I love him. I'm excited by him. I'm excited that every day you know, you know, you know what's amazing? You know, we get revelation. You know, like God talks to us every day. And that's amazing. You know, even there's people, preachers, who don't get that. They don't hear from God. We come on and the Lord speaks to us. Every day, because we pray and we seek his face. In Jesus' mighty name. God is good. Amen. In Jesus name at the end of the year we're gonna appreciate the Lord for all that he's done for us okay so get yourself ready get yourself prepared okay we're gonna thank God for all that he has done for us in 2018 amen he has been good he has been good oh he has been good he has been good God has been good. I'm blown away because I read this text and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know what, I didn't quite get it until we, until we started praying and the Lord began to talk. God speak to me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Minister Paul, and it is, it is well in Jesus' name. Our Savior is alive and well. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Have yourself a blessed day. Greetings from Accra, Ghana. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll try and put this thing in notes. I'm, I'm going to see how I'm going to put it together, but I'm going to work something out. Okay? Thank you for your support. Thank you for those who give. Please continue to support us. Okay? Please. Okay? Uh, support us. Support us. Okay? In Jesus' mighty name. I'm putting, I'm putting everything for this year together so you will have it, what we've done, what, you know, what we've achieved. Okay? 
Thank you for those supporting the call to prayer. We can do more. We can do better. Okay, the target for a call to prayer next year. We started already. Okay, please just think about that for me. Okay, let the Lord lead you. I appreciate you. God bless you. That was powerful. Lay it down, brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. Amen.